Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I know it's Saturday and I usually do sermons on Sunday, but now my camera is working. So while it's working, I'm going to do my sermon. Um, so just pretend it's Sunday and um, we'll be all right. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day and I thank you for what you're about to do, Lord Jesus, permeate the atmosphere with your love, your grace, and your kindness, Lord. You are ever so loving and ever so gracious and ever so kind. And we bless you and love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, guys, do, don't I have a story for you before I get into the meat of my sermons? If... If you guys were wondering where I was for the past few weeks, well, my computer went down. What happened is my computer has been acting up for the past few weeks. So, um, taking a long time to upload. I used to have to turn it on and then wait and then wait and then wait for it to come on. And all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, it eventually had the biscuit. So, um, because it had the biscuit, it, it just conked out. So for, for a week, I didn't even have a computer. And when I... Go when I got one, um, it blessedly, um, I, my computer had already been in the works because my other one was old. So I got a new one, but when I first tried it, the webcam didn't work. My old webcam didn't work because they provide the computer, but not the webcam or the speaker or, or a couple other fun things that are not essential. They just provide the computer and the basic writing aids. But, but so, um, I tried my webcam and it didn't work. But last night, I tried it and it worked and I tried it again. Now, I saw the blue light come on, and it worked. So, that's why I'm doing my sermon now. Because I think uh, there's something wrong with the drivers. I'm going to have to figure, figure what's going on with that. Anyway, um, that's what's going on. So, that's why I haven't been on for a few weeks because I've had computer problems and then webcam problems and then all this stuff. So I'm here now and I want I want to do um something called a sermon called doing this. I was listening to a a song by Luke Combs called Doing This. And Luke Combs, if you don't know, is a country singer. He's won a bunch of awards. He's really, really popular. He's an amazing country singer. He's got a really gr a real growl to his voice that I love. Anyway, um he's he has a song called Doing This. And I just think it's great. It's about, he said, if he, he, he talks about people asking him in an interview if he w wasn't doing this, meaning a singer and touring and all that stuff, what would he be doing? And he, if he, he said, if I was if I wasn't doing this, I would be doing this, which means if he wasn't singing and touring and whatever, he would still be 
singing, but on a smaller scale. He'd probably, instead of singing to stadiums, he'd be um, doing it in in um, in smaller clubs and crowds and working a dead end job and all that stuff. So he wouldn't change what he was doing, but he would change the level on which he was doing it. And um, sometimes, um, sometimes we want, we want to get to a higher level, but we don't celebrate the level that we're on and we don't do what we're called to do because we're waiting on some deep level. And the Lord's saying, do what you love to do anyway. You don't have to wait for it, for it to be some kind of big level on people to notice you. Just do it because you love to do it. Just do it because you're called to to do it, and that's what the Lord is saying uh, right now to somebody. He's saying, do it on the level that you can do it, and I will increase you. He's like, treasure small beginnings. Don't wait until it's big. Uh, just treasure small beginnings, because small beginnings is how you learn. Because a lot of people want the big thing. They want to be discovered on YouTube or they want the big church or they want the acclaim and all that's nice. But do what you're called to do on the level that you can for now. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes he will he will graduate you to the level that you see. So, in other words, I'm preaching on YouTube, sometimes to only one person watching, but it doesn't make what I do less valuable than T.D. Jakes or Pastor Furtick, Pastor Stephen Furtick, that preach to... Um, thousands of people, millions of people every week in person and online and at, and at different locations. It's just on a different level. But what I do, what I do as a preacher is not less significant than what they do. It's on a different level. And my level of preaching is just as needed as their level of preaching. See, I think um, it's all about the optics that we see things. Sometimes we think that things have to be big and grandiose um, for us to make a difference, but no. Start where you are and he will increase you. And even if he doesn't, increase you in the way you thought what you do is significant and how you do it the level you do it on is significant and what you do doesn't change the level may change but what you do doesn't change i may i may get a church one day speaking to 50 people 100 people thousand people and millions of people um, but what what I'm doing right now will still remain the same the level will change but the grassroots of preaching the grassroots of me will not change so don't wait for the big things start small and maybe it will grow and maybe it won't but even if it, it won't You'll, you'll be still be doing what you've been called to do, and that's what the that's all all the Lord wants of you. Not everybody's gonna gonna um, preach on a stage full of thousands of people. We need the pastors of the hundred people. 
150 people. We need the ministers to preach on YouTube. We need the light to shine in all these different places. So if everybody's on the grandiose stage, who is, who is going to be in the trenches of 50 people in small towns? Who's going to pastor the, the 200 uh, people in this, in the town in the middle of nowhere that also needs Christ? Um, who is going to do real estate on to, to um, the little people in your little town if there's, if there's no one there to do it? Who's going to teach um, to these uh, 20 people if you, if you, if you want to be in a college room of 100 people? See, we need people at all levels. We need people to pastor big churches. We need t people to pastor little churches, medium-sized churches. We need the things to go out however they go out. And what you do is significant. And, and, and don't, don't, don't despise the day of small beginnings because it's how you get your training. It's how you get your training and what you're doing now could be training for later. But even if it isn't, in, even if you spend your life um, uh, in, in, that small, in that small, in that small place or just ministering to that, that that set of people, keep in mind that it's what God wants you to do. And isn't, isn't that the main purpose of you doing what you want, want to do? Isn't that the main purpose of God putting in you what he wants to put in you? Or is it for a, a claim and likes and to be seen by people? I've come to the conclusion last night, if I never get the church, if I never get the movie production company, if I never get what I see, I will still be in God's purpose for my life. Because preaching on YouTube for now is the purpose that God has given me. Giving prophetic words on YouTube for now is what God has given me preparing um, to do um, to do movies is what God has given me to do for now and making those videos of all these movie ideas is what God has called me to do for now I'm I'm in the preparation stage and the Lord says to me and all y'all out there be thankful for the preparation stage. B, learn from the preparation stage. He says, do not despise the preparation stage. This is all preparation. And the, the greater that's coming may not be physical. It may be mental, it may be spiritual, it may be financial, it may be all kinds of greater. And the Lord said, do not despise the, the days of preparation. It's a stage and he says preparation is necessary. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It's just so awesome. And he's preparing somebody out there right now when I, I just praise you Lord for what you're doing in their lives and I praise you for what you're about to do in their lives and I praise you for just being God in their lives and I I really feel that God is calling somebody to be grateful for the days of preparation and stop wishing these pre preparatory times away 
because you'll need the preparatory times for what's coming because what's coming, you can't contain it, whether on a mental level, physical level, financial level. Without these preparation times, you won't be able to contain it. You won't be able to manage it. And he's taking you through these times on your level to teach you how to manage it. To, to teach you how to manage the time of preparation and to to show you that the time of preparation, like I said before, is necessary. So learn everything you can right now in these preparation times because what's coming may not be may not be physically big, but it may be emotionally taxing. It may be spiritually taxing. It may be on another level taxing. And he's teaching you in your room how to handle what he's going to bring you to in the light. He's teaching you in the dark how to handle what he's bringing you to in the light. He's teaching you in the dark how to handle what he's bringing you to in the light. And he's bringing you to something greater than you could ever imagine. Greater than you could, than you could ever hope for. Greater than you could ever dream of. And greater may not be bigger, may not be a big, a big stage or whatever. Greater might be more mental capacity, maybe may more visionary capacity, maybe more financial capacity, maybe more social capacity. He's putting in you right now on the level you're at, things you're going to need for what he's taking you to. So do not despise these days of preparation. These days of preparation are necessary. These days of preparation are necessary. They're necessary. Thank you, Jesus. These days of preparation are necessary. He's saying, you've been crying and asking for more. But he's saying, the more is in the preparation. He's saying, these days are days of preparation. And the more you're looking for is contingent on how you handle these days of preparation. The more you're looking for is contingent on the way you handle these days of preparation. Like, don't wish them away. Listen and learn. Because if you look around you, you can listen from these days of preparation, what's needed, what's what needs to be changed or what needs to be solved. He's put you somewhere that instead of complaining, he wants you to be the solution. He wants you to observe and watch and learn. And sometimes he would want you to do something about it or sometimes he w would want you to watch and learn so when you can um, make changes or do, do something about where you are, then you'll have the tools and the experience to, to know that, yes, I can do something about where I am. Yes, I can um, uh, be a catalyst for this. Wherever you are, wherever you sit, there are ways that you can make whatever situation you are in better. And sometimes the ways may not be physical. Sometimes the first way you can make, make any situation better is by a matter of perspective. Instead of complaining and, oh, this is never going to get better. Oh, 
mind me and having pity for yourself and feeling sad and down. He said, change your perspective about where you're living, how you're living, what you're li living, and take the lessons that he's trying to teach you. When, okay, I'll go, remember I said about my computer and when my computer went down? Well, the day before it went down, he said, do not, the Spirit of the Lord said, do not turn off your computer. I said, God, I need to turn that off. It's been on for three days. He said, do not turn it off. Um, and I disobeyed him and turned it off. And I wasn't able to turn it back on. And that taught me about my utter disobedience. He's like, trust yourself that you hear me. See, because often it's not him I don't trust. Often it is me I don't trust. I don't trust that I hear him. And there's been other little examples in my personal life where I've heard him say something and I've completely ignored it just because it's not him I don't trust. It's the fact that I'm not sure I heard him or I don't trust that I've heard him. It's that I don't trust myself. And he's teaching me to trust myself. Trust that I heard him and trust my instinct. And he will say to someone out there right now, he's saying right now, trust your instincts. You know what to do. You've been going here and there and whatever. He's saying instead of doing that or instead of complaining to me, you know what to do. Trust your instincts. I've given them to you. They're God-centered. They're God-driven. And it's not just you. It's not just you. I've given you a gift. I've given you a knowledge that the world needs. But you need to trust that you are the one to bring it to the world. Uh, a lot of us are so down on ourselves. And he's saying right now... There is no need to be down on yourself. You need to trust yourself and trust that, yes, you hear me. He said, it's not me you have a problem trusting. A lot of people say, trust the Lord, trust the Lord, trust the Lord. Yes, we trust the Lord, but sometimes we don't trust that the Lord is really speaking to us or we don't trust that he's called us to do what we're called to do. And he's saying, I have called you and you know exactly what you need to do. You don't need to run to this friend or that friend. He's saying, you don't even need to run to me. I've told you what to do. I've given you the tools. I've given you the intuition. And that's what I need you to follow. I need you to follow the intuition that I put in you. I need you to follow the instructions that I've given you. And I will be there. He said, fear not. I will be there to guide you right through it. I will be there to, to give you the right people, to send the right people to you. You just have to take a step. A lot of people are afraid of um, getting in the wrong people's hands and that's why they don't do anything. But he's saying, you need not be afraid. You just need to trust that I've given you the instruction. You need to trust me. And then if you trust me, then you need to trust yourself. He's saying, it's not me you don't trust. It's yourself that I, that I am speaking to you, that I do say things from you. 
because you let the world tell you because of who you are that you're insignificant. But it's not true. It doesn't matter if you're a black man or a woman with a disability or whatever you are. I, whoever you are, I've given you what you need to do what you need to do. You don't need any more than I've given you. And you've got to trust me. You've got to trust yourself and me and stop being afraid. I put that in you. It's not for somebody else. If I wanted it to be for somebody else, it would be for somebody else. But I've given it to you for a reason. You are the catalyst for it. You are... You are the brains for it. I've given it to you for a reason. That's why you're not sleeping. That's why things are hard for you. It's not because you're worried or whatever. It's because God is giving you revelation. And he's calling you to just receive that he's given it to you. And when he says to move, he doesn't want you to second guess. He doesn't want you to, to say, oh, well, maybe not. Well, if not, he say, if you feel to do something and it doesn't work out and you feel you failed, he's saying, so what? <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what he's saying to me. He's saying, at least step out. He's saying, step out. And he's saying, if you fail, there'll be a lesson to teach, to take you to your even greater level. And if you fail, there, there, there is a lesson in your failure. So either way, you win. So regardless, you will win and you will eventually get to where he's He's calling for you to go. And that's what he's been saying today. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace. You are so wonderful and gracious. And we bless you. We adore you. We lift you up. We give you praise. We give you worship. We honor you. We adore you. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He's saying, if you're scared, if you feel broken, do it anyway. If you feel like you're not the right person, that's okay. Do it anyway. He's saying, whatever I put in you to do, do it anyway. Do it whether you feel broken. Do it whether you feel unqualified. Do it whether you feel you don't have enough. Do it whether you feel people will laugh at you. Because at the other side of their laughter will be amazement when God shows off in your life. And he's saying, do it anyway. You don't know how you're going to get this right resource? Do it anyway. He's saying, do it anyway. Whatever it is, do it anyway. And he'll be there to have your back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we lift you up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you worship. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I speak to every spirit of fear in myself and everyone watching. And I command you to go. Lord God, I just release blessings. And Lord Jesus, arise sleeping destinies. Arise sleeping destinies. Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I wake up the sleeping giants, the people that 
that have been restless and they've had, they, God has put a word in their mouths, oh God, and I declare that they will speak it with boldness and with power, Lord God. I pray that it will come forth with precision, oh God. Wake up your sleeping giants. The church has been sleeping for too long. Wake us up, Lord God. Anything that is not of you, God, burn it. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We adore you, God. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. Release glory, Lord Jesus. Release blessings, O oh God. Release favor, Lord God. Release wholeness, O oh holiness, O oh God. Release it, Lord Jesus. Release the bound, release the broken. Heal, save, deliver, Lord God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. I will see you when I when I see you. Hopefully next week if I can get the camera to work again. Take care. Bye.